What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out 10 horribly cruel WWE moments that was made worse when you know the actual truth. This should be a very interesting one. I'm looking forward to see what particular moments they're uh, talking about and the behind the scenes on what actually made those situations that much worse. So, uh, we're gonna get right into this one. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Let's get right into this thing, man. This list will show wrestling's biggest company has a long and spiteful history of belittling and endangering its employees to yeah. satisfy the often cruel whims of the people in charge. I am Gareth here from What Culture Wrestling, and here are 10 horribly cruel WWE moments worse when you know the truth. Number 10, WWE motivate Jeff Hardy with pictures of his dead dog. Considering oh, how much of wrestling is based on psychology and crowd manipulation, WWE's higher-ups often show a surprising lack of awareness for how the average human thinks. What culture alone has spent a lot of time talking about the infamous Matt and Jeff Hardy 2009 feud, which cut uncomfortably close to the bone. Matt was understandably yeah. uncomfortable about having to claim responsibility for the real-life house fire that claimed the life of Jeff's I dog, remember Jack. This. But it gets worse when you learn how WWE tried to use the tragedy to motivate Jeff for a promo. As reported by Sports Kida, Jeff revealed on the podcast Wrestling with Freddy that WWE commissioned a video package which prominently featured Jeff's deceased pet. As Jeff put it, company officials told him this wow. was done to get Jeff fired up, itself an unfortunate choice of words. But it had the exact opposite effect, because of course it did. Rather yeah. than filling Jeff with righteous fury, seeing a video of his beloved former pet just bummed him out. It beggars belief that WWE genuinely thought showing Jeff a video of his recently killed dog would do anything other than depress him, yeah. idiots. Number 9, WWE That's, that's kind of fucked up, bro. Like, what is... How is that to... What, what? I remember that angle, too. I remember that storyline. They they brought... Tried to bring some realism into it and stuff like that, but, uh... Yeah, I don't... I don't think showing my... My dead dog that, obviously, I cared about in a video package is just gonna like motivate me even more to be on some like aggressive and angry and and really fire me up if anything it may bring out the opposite sadness and and depression so i don't know about that one that was yeah that wasn't thought out too well Humiliates bully and fire Mickey James based on her looks. The Piggy James debacle has long been an exemplar oh, yeah. of why the Divas division is seen as a low point in WWE history. Yeah. The legendary Mickey James spent months being bullied by Michelle McCool and Layla over her weight. As the duo tormented Mickey for reasons that were patently false to anyone with a functioning set of eyes. Yeah. Everyone involved hated the angle. Surprise, yeah. surprise. But he just kept going. Even worse, the heels wound up winning the feud. With Mickey's sole title victory over Michelle McCool being rendered redundant when the latter won the belt back less than a month later. Mickey would later be fired less than two months after dropping the belt, eventually revealing that she was told the company was moving the women's division in a new direction. Sadly for women's wrestling, said direction was based solely on how many fashion models John Laurinaitis could get his skeevy little hands on. <laughs> Number eight, WWE... And that's, uh, that's always, like, just knowing that, that's always been crazy to me because, like, Mickey James looked good in my eyes and a lot of people's eyes i don't i don't i don't know obviously wwe wanted a particular look but i always thought mickey james was very attractive so i, I never understood the notion of trying to call her quote-unquote fat like what are we doing i don't know i don't know that, that was just my personal opinion on it i was like that's kind of weird <laughs> Be reference Reed Flair's suicide without telling his immediate family. I Staying think on I've the heard subject about this of atrocious too, yeah. Divas division angles, yeah. we come to one of the most jaw-droppingly callous segments in WWE history. Yeah. In 2015, Paige and Charlotte were embroiled in a feud for the Divas title, as the company finally injected the floundering division with much-needed talent. Unfortunately, the feud ended up being overwhelmed by the inexplicable decision yeah. to have Paige reference the tragic suicide of Reed Flair, Charlotte's yeah. brother, as eye-poppingly insensitive as the comment was, you'd expect WWE to have received permission from Reed's immediate nope. family to use his suicide as storyline fodder, or at the very least, to get in touch with them ahead of time to inform them Reed's death would be referred to on Raw. Sadly, that was just not the case. Reed's mother, Elizabeth, found out about the comment the same time as the rest of the bloody world, and let her feelings be known in a tweet that blasted the company as lazy and disrespectful. Yeah, suicide is an extraordinarily heavy subject for a wrestling program to deal with, yeah. and WWE using it 
for cheap heat shows the rotten state the company was in at the time. Number yeah, seven. Nah, that's, we've seen uh, uh, clips talking about that in uh, another video. That's just not cool. If the family doesn't okay it, don't do it. Don't do it. Especially just to get a cheap, cheap ooh and an ah. Like, don't do it, bro. Don't do it. I wouldn't even have thought of that. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't really enhance the feud anymore, in my personal opinion. Because I, I never just considered that feud one of those feuds that was that personal to even bring up such heinous things like that, a real-life thing like that. So, yeah, that was not cool by WWE, for sure. And the locker room turn on Hassan for disrespecting Eddie Guerrero, even though Eddie didn't care. While WWE Damn. has had its share of outcasts over the years, few have amassed the staggering level of vitriol Mohammed Hassan accumulated in the eight months he spent on the company roster. The nadir came when Hassan, under the advice of Kurt Angle, asked Eddie Guerrero to stop using the camel clutch, as it was Hassan's finisher. Unfortunately, the young rookie didn't realize Eddie's father was the man who had actually invented this move. Uh. While the aftermath of the incident is well known, Hassan wound up paying a $2,000 bar tab for the entire locker room as punishment. What usually gets swept under the rug is that Eddie himself was wasn't angered by Muhammad's blunder at all. Oh. For Fightful, Hassan explained that Eddie himself was extremely professional over the whole situation, as he realized the younger wrestler had been put in a bad spot through Kurt's bogus advice. He said the conversation ended with a hug, which makes the rest of the locker room's subsequent overreaction even more jarring. Yeah. Hassan may have been removed from TV following his infamous terrorist angle with The Undertaker, but that was only the final nail in the coffin his peers had built for him. Number six, Lita was and, told- And that wasn't even his fault. He was told to do that so yeah he, he just kind of had a bad hand dealt to him honestly well, she'd be fired if she didn't take part in the live sex celebration. Wow. When Bret Hart described professional wrestling in his biography as two I didn't know that. telling a story with their bodies, I doubt he had Lita and Edge's notorious live sex celebration in mind. Both performers have since gone on record to describe their understandable discomfort with the segment. But unsurprisingly, it was the female half of the duo who came under the most fire from WWE management for airing her displeasure at the time. Back in 2021, Lita claimed on her Twitch channel that Vince McMahon was hot to trot for the segment, and that saying no was just not an option. Damn. When Lita voiced her trepidation at the idea of going all the way on live television, she was threatened with her release. Vince clearly has all the moral conscience of an abattoir, and if his employees didn't follow his every whim he had and likely still has, he had and likely still has no problem sending them straight into the disassembly line. Was this the most shocking segment in Monday Night Raw history? If not, what was? Let me know in the comment section down below. I mean, it's one of the highest i think it is still the highest rated segment or highest viewed segment of all time in monday night raw history but at the same time both of them didn't even want to do this but it brought them in ratings but they didn't want to do this this is once again this is it's not wrestling this, this literally is not wrestling at that point this was just this was the sports entertainment side of things i know a lot of people enjoyed it and it really was to build up Lita and Edge as this despicable uh, heel power couple, but they didn't even want to do it, but they had no other choice. Like, it was literally either do this or you're going to suffer in the end. So they had no other choice. So it's like, damn. Oh, number five, DX mocked Chris Masters for losing weight after he went to rehab. When Chris Masters oh, wow. took time off TV in 2006, he returned looking notably leaner than before his absence. This fact didn't go unnoticed by Triple H, who upon hearing Chris was thinking about writing a book on nutrition, smilingly replied, really, what's it going to be called? How to lose 50 pounds of muscle in four weeks? Wow. In an interview with Power Slam magazine, Masters took the high road and said Triple H was an equal opportunity ball buster. Unfortunately, as interviewer Greg Lambert noted, given the events surrounding the younger wrestler's leave of absence, Triple H's joke came across as extremely tone deaf. Yeah. Chris Masters had actually been in rehab, struggling to overcome an addiction to prescription pills that had ballooned to the point he was taking 75 painkillers a day. Damn. Masters explained that the weight loss came from the two miles of running he did every day as part of his therapy, and the relative lack of weight training that came with giving his overstressed muscles a break. Given that WWE had just implemented the wellness policy earlier that year, Openly mocking one of its beneficiaries on live television wasn't the smartest move Triple H could have made. Number yeah, four, that 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 definitely wasn't uh, the the best thing to say 
I didn't know he had like a, a pill addiction like that. I really did not know that. But that is truly amazing. He was able to overcome that. You feel me? So I I never knew he had some type of pill addiction. 75 pills a day is insanity. Jeez, man. I'm glad he was able to overcome that for sure, though. Natalia gets squashed on pay-per-view on her birthday. On the surface, yep. having Natalia be Rhea Ripley's opponent at Night of Champions yeah. was a sound decision. I remember this Natalia one. Natalia may not have had a hope of winning, but WWE giving her a chance to strut her stuff on a big stage seemed like a nice birthday present for one of the company's yeah, longest serving performers. Been. Then the match happened, and well, the nope. following is a blow-by-blow -blow account of the entire bout. Number one, Rhea attacks Natalia while the latter is distracted by Dominic. Number two, Rhea boots Natalia out the ring. Number three. Three, Rhea slams Natalia into an announce table. Number four, Rhea slams Natalia into an announce table again. Number five, Rhea slams Natalia into an announce table again. Yeah. Number six, Rhea throws Natalia into the ring steps. Number seven, Rhea throws Natalia into another set of ring steps. Number eight, Rhea rolls Natalia back into the ring. Number nine, Rhea headbutts Natalia. Number ten, Rhea hits the riptide and pins Natalia. That was and it. there you have it, a simple 10 step 70 second guide on how to give a 16 year. And she hit her with the all in pose. I, 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 I think we was watching this live, and someone had uh, y'all were mentioning in the chat that it was her birthday. I was like, oh, that's kind of cold that they squashed her on her birthday like that. That was, that was wild, actual company veteran the worst birthday ever number three the cold. british bulldog has his already ruined back slammed into dog turds to yeah. pop the boss the uh -huh. british bulldog's final run in wwe was a sad Infamous sight to one. see prior to leaving the company following the montreal screw job bulldog had been in the form of his life he'd spent the previous year having absolute bangers with legendary workers like owen and bret hart but he returned to wwe in 1999 a shell of his former self tragically while working in wcw the british bulldog suffered a horrendous spinal injury that put him in the hospital for six months. Even worse, it kick-started an addiction to painkillers and morphine in the lead-up to his sudden death in 2002. Damn, Knowing the man. state Bulldog's ravaged back was in, it's even harder to watch the ill-advised segment where Davy Boy was slammed back first into a pile of dog poop. According to longtime WWE staffer Bruce Pritchard, the only reason this angle happened was because in Vince McMahon's mind, there's nothing funnier than dog crap. Watching the British Bulldog taking back bumps during this period, knowing the state his body was in and where it would ultimately lead, is already uncomfortable. Yeah. Watching him be humiliated at the same time because of his a-hole boss is infuriating. Number two, Shawn Michaels beats the... Yep, and, and that, that, was, that was the thing with Vince. Like, Vince, whatever he found funny, which a lot of times it wasn't funny, he would have wrestlers go ahead and do it. Especially if he felt like they weren't, at, like top of the card material or whatnot or they're they're on a downtrend of their career they're gonna he's gonna have them do some of the dumbest stuff that he thinks is funny and it's like damn bro these are once you know your main eventers your headliners and now you kind of just treating them like some jags and the butt of the joke that's that's how vince uh operated British Bulldog in his hometown in front of his dying sister. That's it cannot be overstated what an utter bro. prick Shawn Michaels was in the 90s. Yeah. From sleeping with his co-worker's girlfriend to yep. acting like a prima donna in and outside of the ring. Yeah. Michaels' reputation for obnoxious behavior was well earned. Sadly, one evening in Britain saw the superstar's natural selfishness transmogrify into something truly evil. The British Bulldog was all set to defend his European Championship against Shawn at one night only. A pay-per-view held in Bulldog's home country of Britain. Having been told he was going over, Davy Boy dedicated the match to his sister oh. Tracy, hoping to give her something to cheer about while she was battling cancer that would ultimately claim her life. Oh. Unfortunately, Sean had other ideas. Sean convinced WWE higher-ups to change plans and put the belt on him. The allure of becoming a Grand Slam champion and screwing over his perennial nemesis Bret Hart, Bulldog's brother-in-law, proving too great a temptation for the egomaniacal wrestler to resist. WWE, as they did all too often with Sean, relented and the end result was one of the most depressing conclusions in pay-per-view history number one five th that's fucked up bro that's fucked up and i look people can change sean is definitely changed he's not the same person but that's fucked up y'all talk about cm punk being a menace y'all talk about cm punk being the ultimate menace backstage and you had a guy like Shawn Michaels knowing that 
his opponent's sister is going through, you know, cancer treatments and trying to recover from that. And the match has already been predetermined on who's going to win. Only for him to pull backstage politicking to say, you know what? I want to win this match. I don't give a damn about his, his dying sister. Fuck all that. I'm trying to prove a point. That's cold, bro. That's fucking cold. He could have won it some other time. When they went back to the States. That's, that's cold, bro. That's fucking cold, bro. Thousand dollars is deemed too expensive to safeguard Owen Hart's life. As detailed by John Pollock, WWE got yep, into an argument about with this rigger one. Joe Branham about the cost of the stunt that ultimately cost Owen Hart his yep. life at Over the Edge 1999. Due to WWE's insistence in allowing a quick release function, so Owen could take a comedy pratfall immediately after landing in the ring, Branham quoted them at $5,000. WWE responded by firing Branham and doing the stunt on the cheap, leading to the fateful events of May yep. 23rd, 1999. $5,000 was seen as too much to protect Owen Hart. Hart, one of the greatest, most loved wrestlers to ever enter the business. $5,000 was seen as too much to ensure Owen's wife would be able to grow old with her husband, and yep. their children would grow up with their father. The yep. death of Owen Hart is the greatest tragedy to ever occur in a WWE ring. The fact that it was also the most easily avoidable makes it all the more devastating. Yep. And that is our list. Know of any other horribly cruel WWE moments worse when uh, you know the truth? Let us know all about yeah, them in the comments section. That, uh, literally. Like, we're talking about a guy at that time, millions. Company's doing pretty pretty well for itself. It's not like they were struggling. you telling me they couldn't have an extra $5,000 set aside so that way he can make sure he's safe. That's all you had to do. An extra five grand to make sure your wrestler is safe. Even the wrestler wasn't really comfortable with doing this, but he he, he stood by. Owen wasn't comfortable doing that. He, he really didn't want to, but he's like, you know what? I'm gonna do what I, I gotta do. And you couldn't invest just an extra five grand in to make sure this guy was safe, bro. So I, I, that's ah, oh, that's yeah. That's all, that's all I can really say other than, yep, that that's, it's, I, I don't even have words to really kind of put that into, like, a perspective. I can only imagine how his family would feel, or have felt over these years because of what happened, because of the lack of just care. I don't know, man. I, man, I don't know. But comment down below. Let me know some other, I guess, cool WWE moments or, you know, not even just WWE. Maybe get into WCW or maybe even AEW, TNA. Some other cruel moments you've seen in wrestling, but you also found out the truth behind said cruel moments, man. Let me know down below if they weren't on this list already. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Road to 150K. And I'm still here in the speed of YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.